Hi, I'm Paul from Amsterdam, and today we're going to be showing you some of the sights from Liverpool, which are mentioned in our new single, Does This Train Stop on Merseyside? Yeah, the song began life on this very street, Maryland Street, when I received an email from my uh, then partner and the girl who sings the backing vocals on the song, um, explaining to me just what this crazy pyramid in this uh, graveyard next door was. We're outside the tomb of uh, William James Mackenzie, who was quite a wealthy merchant in the 1800s in Liverpool. Now, Mackenzie was um, a well-known gambler and an ardent atheist, which was a very unusual thing uh, back in those days. And one night he was playing a game of cards here on Rodney Street, and uh, there's a guy there called Mr Madison, who he didn't know. Now, Mr Madison cleaned Mackenzie out that evening and suggested to Mackenzie that they carry on playing. Mackenzie said, I've got no more money. So he said, well, play for your soul. And it wouldn't matter to you because you're an atheist. So Mackenzie agreed. Of course, Mackenzie lost. And then, in a flash, Madison was gone, apparently leaving a burning smell in the room. But not before Madison had said to him, I'll be back for you when your bones are in the ground. Mackenzie always remembered this, and he spent the last of his fortune on erecting this tomb to keep his bones above the ground, therefore cheating the devil from his soul. Apparently his ghost wanders around this area to this day. This is John Lennon Airport in Speak, Liverpool, and this is where EasyJet have one of their main operations. You can fly from here cheaply to anywhere in Europe. So at the weekend, um, the, the great cities of Europe are just full of pissed up scousers having a great time. The orange and white jets take off here, go across the river and fly directly above my house, taunting me and making me wish I was on them. Right, this city was essentially built on money that was derived from one of the darkest periods of uh, human history, the slave trade. The town and its inhabitants derived great wealth from the slave trade. All the ships that took all of the slaves over to the Americas were all registered here in Liverpool. Overall, Liverpool's ships transported at least half of the three million slaves that were taken to the Americas by the British slave ships. Um, all the street names are named after the merchants. All the buildings are built by slave money. It's a dark secret. We're here in Matthew Street, and this is probably the most famous thoroughfare in the city. Here at the bottom of the street um, is where five roads converge. And according to Bill Drummond, um, erstwhile rock and roll lunatic and manager of various bands, um, there's a line of energy that comes down from the North Pole and goes straight up the middle of the street and then goes off to Glastonbury or Egypt or some other mystical bollocks. And that's what gives this street its special energy and why so many special things have happened on this particular road. So here we are on Matthew Street outside the world famous Cavern Club. Uh, the Beatles played here, so I've heard, 262 times. Although, not technically this cavern, what's not so well publicised is that about 20 years ago it was tunnelled through and filled in to make room for the underground system at Liverpool. Under there, so actually. if you just look under here, you can see <laughs> that the, uh, <laughs> it's currently being renovated. But for the time being, if you come into Liverpool and you want to see the cavern, this is about as close as you're going to get. Once you've had like three pints of Stella, just for the cavern. Right on the other side of the street from the Cavern Club was Eric's, which God knows what it is now. But this was Liverpool's premier punk rock club. Uh, and according to Wiley-esque legend, the Clash played here one night, and everybody in the audience formed a band the day after. Um, the Stranglers went through here, the Pistols, the Jam. Split ends. Crowded house. Uh, and basically, um, this club has a lot more to do with Amsterdam's music than that 60s one over there. But um, the line of energy apparently has given uh, rise to both. Okay, we're now on Slater Street, which if you're in town on a Saturday night, is one of the busier parts of the city, famous for the Jacaranda Club. Mm, not for the faint-hearted on but Saturday, not, though. Not for the faint-hearted, no. <laughs> a very lively place. This place used to be owned by Alan Williams, the Beatles' first manager, who took them to Hamburg, found them the first drummers, got them the first gigs. The first ever show they did was downstairs here in the uh, cellar. And Alan can be seen around town telling his uh, famous tale of how he lost the band to Brian Epstein on the cusp of international success in various pubs around here. Especially this one here. This is the Marlborough Arms. Um, 
Except it's not the Marlborough Arms, is it? No, it's just it's just the Marlborough Pub. Because the songwriter is a shoddy workman <laughs> and can't be bothered researching his uh, local ale houses. I thought it was called the Marlboro Arms. He doesn't spend enough time in them anyway. You think you know the fucking name? I don't. Not that much. And uh, I thought it was called the Marlboro Arms, but it's called the Marlboro. So uh, there's a grave error right in the middle of the song. <laughs> Great Irish potato famine probably had the most profound effect upon Liverpool and its character to this day. Over a million people starved to death just across the water there in Ireland. That's why Liverpool's known as the capital of Ireland. A lot of people came over here, starved to death in the streets here in Liverpool as well. You know, the funny thing is, is that uh, there wasn't actually a famine, there was just a blight on potatoes. There's plenty of crops, uh, oats, barley, wheat, fish, livestock. But the British shipped them all out and the peasants starved to death. And then they came over here. Because of this, Liverpool is not a very English city. It's kind of got its back to the rest of the UK. It's more of a Celtic place. And uh, all of this gives rise to the fact that the girls don't wear any coats even in the dead of winter. Jack Straw says that uh, we're all up to something. Everybody's got a joke to tell. Everybody's a thief. Some of it's true, some of it's not. It's just a very different place. That's the main thing. I'm not actually from Liverpool, I'm from that side of the river and crazy things happen over there as well. I remember during uh, the famous Louise Woodward trial a few years ago and at one point the entire world was watching this crazy little pub on Sky Telly. The pub was called The Rigger and uh, shit like that could only happen where I'm from. Now I'm not a Liverpool fan and I'm not an Everton fan. I dislike both clubs. Intensely. I'm a Tramway Rovers fan. But uh, Hillsborough brought us all together and we'll never forget it. And people come from all over to pay their respects at this monument outside Anfield. I'll never forget that day because I was busking out with a friend of mine in Chester and um, we went to the pub at three o'clock to have a pint. And we just watched all the scenes unfold in front of us on the television. Now, a couple of years after this, a friend of mine uh, it ran a fanzine called What's the Score? and he, he uh, published a photograph. And the photograph was uh, as of the Liverpool fans and the Forest fans ferrying the dead and injured on makeshift stretchers made out of advertising hoardings. Whilst in the background, there was a circle of policemen chatting with folded arms, not helping the people in distress at all. Very powerful photograph. And of course, we'll never forget until we get justice for the 96 people that died that day. Hi, I'm Paul, the bass player from Amsterdam, and today we're going to be showing you some of the sights from our hometown in Liverpool, uh, which is the song about which the thing <laughs> that we're in. <laughs> you know, you know the thing that we're in. Yeah. Now do it all again, because okay. we like doing it. We're going to fuck the band off and be fucking modern day Blue Peter presenters. <laughs> <laughs> This is John Lennon Airport in Speak, Liverpool. And this is uh, where EasyJet have a mainest operation. Mainest dust dust, better do that again. Okay, this city was essentially built on money derived from one of the darkest periods of human history. Scousers. Uh, a line of energy, a ley line, comes down from the North Pole and straight down the middle of the street off to Glastonbury and then some other 